Hello fellow game creators. I've made a developer console for my internal projects that I thought would be really helpful for others to use, so I've made it available to download on the YoYo Games Marketplace. I'm just going to quickly show you how powerful it is on the game Undercrude that I'm currently working on and how it can be used to rapidly debug and develop your games while they are running. So, if we start really simple, we can use it to create and destroy objects. Let's open it up and type in create object enemy. As you can see, an enemy has been created. Destroying objects is as simple as typing destroy object name. And the enemy has been removed. You can see that it records the history of the commands that you use, so it's really easy to rerun those in the future. If we want, we can add a position when spawning objects by adding it at the end. So if I type create object enemy 200 200, the enemy is spawned in the corner. I'm terrible at remembering what I named objects and variables. So as you can see, everything gets autocomplete and suggestions as you type. I'll talk about this later, but the console retrieves the name of everything for you, so you don't need to edit code or keep anything up to date. This makes the console really easy to drop into all your projects. I can also rapidly navigate this using the arrow keys and then tab and enter to confirm the commands. I now want to show you viewing and editing variables. Let's say we want to know the Y position of this title. Type view title Y and it will start drawing it for us. You can see a box has popped up telling us that the value is 19. And also on the left side it actually tells us the highest and lowest recorded values which is also 19. Now this graph isn't very interesting at the moment but if we set the title to move the graph will start changing. So I can enter set object title v speed is equal to 2. This makes the title move down and you can see it updates on the graph. The console will cleverly work out the type of data needed. So if it's a string it will display the text or if it's an array it will display all the records. I can show this by putting the command view object planet name and it now displays all the strings from this array. You can see how this is really helpful for debugging because now we can output any variable no matter if it's a string, an integer or an array and it will work it out for us and draw the graph or the string or whatever's needed. I can easily update the values of arrays as well with set object planet name Dave and it's gone ahead and changed everything for us because it realized we're editing an array and updated all of the records. You might have noticed that it predicts both the built-in variables like direction and speed and the instance variables that you made in your code. One thing that I should have said already is that the console has full text port functionality. So you can use arrow keys to move around or hold down the control and arrow keys to jump whole words at a time. Use shift to select text, home and end to skip back and forth and all the other things you'd expect from a text box. It can also copy and paste from the clipboard and has full support for mouse controls. It has also been made very easy to skin and customise, so you can change the colours to match your game, adjust the animation speeds and many other settings, but it's likely I'll do a whole video on that in the future. There are also a whole bunch of other features included to help you debug your game. So first you can do game debug overlay true to turn on the debug overlay. And game texture debug true. Whoop game texture debug true. This turns on the texture debugging which outputs all the texture swap information. We can also use game room go to and room name. This switches between rooms and again it predicts all of your rooms so you don't have to remember their names. 
you can switch the game between full screen and windowed with game full screen toggle. We have game run restart and game restart to reset the game without needing to compile, which actually speeds up testing quite a bit. We've got game set speed to change the speed the game is running at, which is really useful for watching animations really slowly to make sure they're pixel perfect or to check that events are happening on the exact correct frame. Another feature that I find really useful is Game Instance Count, which counts up all the resources you have. Quite often, you just want to know if an object exists, and this can be used to display a count of every object in your game world. Also, Game Resource Count is fantastic for looking for memory leaks in the game. It counts all the surfaces, datasets, particles, buffers, paths, and you can use this to make sure you're destroying everything that you create. There's Game Debug Event to add an event into the built-in debugger if you use that. And it's likely, if you're watching this in the future, that there are even more that I've added. There are also a bunch of commands for updating the console, like being able to clear the history, but maybe the most interesting of these is the ability to check for updates, which just pops up a browser window and shows all of the new features that I've been working on and what version you're currently running. Being able to run your own script is also really important. If I just load into a level, I can show you how you can run scripts and even add your own arguments. A simple script for this game is just to destroy the player's ship. So if I type in script destroy ship, it will run my destroy ship function. Before I show you how easy it is to drop into a project, I wanted to talk a little about how flexible the commands are. So far, I've always been typing command space object space variable. However, you could put command open bracket object close bracket or command dot or command comma and it's going to work out what you want. The whole console is very flexible. If you want to add or remove characters that can be used as delimiters, you can. You can edit what keys are used to open and close the console, and anything else. The very last thing I want to do is show you just how simple it is to add to your project. The whole system is just one object. You need to download it from the Yo-Yo Games Marketplace, and then at the start of your code, create this object. So just put instance create depth, 0, 0, minus 10,000, object console. You don't need to do anything else. You don't need to change your code or add in objects or variable names because it will pick all those up for you. I'm sure it's going to be really helpful for your projects, big and small. I'll still be developing this console and have a long list of features I want to add, so feel free to contact me with feedback and keep checking the marketplace for updates. If you do want to be notified on updates, the best place to do that is probably my Twitter, Dave's in his pants. Good luck with your games and thanks for watching.